Once upon a time, there was a man and his wife that had wanted a baby for so long, but had never had one. One day, the wife gave her husband the awesome news that they had waited so long for. They were going to have a baby. They lived in a house overlooking a big garden full of fresh vegetables and flowers. Sadly, the garden was protected by a high wall with barbed wire on the top. The mighty witch who lived there wanted no one in her garden. Everyone was very scared of the mighty witch. One day, the wife was so hungry for the fresh radishes. She saw them growing in the witch's garden, but she knew she could not have them. Although she really, really wanted them, she thought she might die if she did not have them. Her husband worried so much about her. She told him, I think I will die unless I can have some of those radishes that grow in the witch's garden. Her husband waited for nightfall so he could climb over the wall to get her some of the witch's radishes. He got her some and climbed back over. She made a big radish salad and it made her feel so much better. But she knew she wanted more radishes. So her husband snuck over the wall at night to pick more radishes. As he was climbing back over the wall, the witch was standing right below him. How dare you steal my radishes, said the witch. My wife thought she would die if I did not get them for her. I am very sorry. If this is true, said the witch, you can have all the radishes you want on one condition. You must promise to give me your child to raise as my own. The man was so scared he agreed to whatever she said just to get away. When the beautiful child was born, the witch came and took her away, just as she had threatened. She named her Rapunzel, which means radish. Rapunzel grew more and more beautiful every day, and on her twelfth birthday, the witch locked her up in a high tower deep in the woods. The tower had no stairs, no door, only a small window. Rapunzel had beautiful long hair that had never been cut. And when the witch wanted to go up to see her, she would cry, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The witch would climb up her hair to see her. This went on for years. One day, a prince was riding by the tower and heard Rapunzel singing. He looked at the tower but had no idea how to get in. So he left. But he came by the next day and saw the witch crying, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And he saw the beautiful girl who sang, let down her hair for the witch to climb up to see her. The prince returned at dusk and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel could not believe it when the young prince appeared, and it was not the witch. They fell in love at first sight. They made a plan for Rapunzel to escape. The witch found this out and cut off Rapunzel's hair and hid her away far from the tower. That night, the witch waited for the prince. He cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The witch threw out Rapunzel's hair, and he climbed up. To his surprise, it was the witch, not Rapunzel. The witch cursed him. You will never see again. And with that, he was blind. For some time, he wandered the forest, hoping to hear Rapunzel singing again. And then, one day, he heard her singing. He followed her voice and found her. They hugged and Rapunzel cried, so happy to see him again. One of her tears fell on his face, and a miracle happened. 
he could see again. Oh, I am so happy to see you again, said the prince. And then another miracle happened. Rapunzel's beautiful hair grew back, as long and shiny as it had been. The prince took Rapunzel to his kingdom far away from the witch, where they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a lovely princess named Snow White. She lived in a castle with her stepmother, a beautiful but wicked queen. The queen was very jealous of Snow White and forced her to work as a servant. Every day, the wicked queen looked into her magic mirror and asked, Magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? The mirror usually answered that the queen was the fairest, which pleased her. Meanwhile, Snow White did her chores and made friends with the courtyard doves. One day, a prince heard Snow White singing. He was enchanted by her. The queen saw this and became angry. Then the magic mirror told her that Snow White was the fairest one in the land. The queen was furious. She ordered her huntsmen to take Snow White to the forest and do away with her. Snow White was so kind and gentle, the huntsman could not harm her. Instead, he warned Snow White of the Wicked Queen's plan. He told her to run away. Snow White ran deep into the dark forest, alone and scared. She fell down and began to cry. The woodland animals heard her and came out to comfort her. They told her everything will be all right, and they showed her to a tiny cottage. There were seven beds in the cottage, with seven names on them. Doc, Happy, Sneezy, Dopey, Grumpy, Bashful, and Sleepy. Snow White thought to herself, what funny names for children, and laid down on a bed and fell asleep. In the meantime, seven dwarves were on their way home from a long day at work. When they got home to their cottage, they found Snow White asleep in one of their beds. Why, it's a girl, they all said. Snow White woke up and said, how do you do? She told them her story of the Wicked Queen. The dwarf said she could stay with them. <laughs> Back at the castle, the Queen did not know Snow White was still alive when she asked the magic mirror, Who is the fairest of them all? The mirror answered, Snow White is the fairest of them all. The Wicked Queen was angry. I will find her and poison her. The Wicked Queen disguised herself as an old woman and headed to the Seven Dwarfs' cottage. It was morning and the dwarfs left to go to work while Snow White was working in the garden. Working away, she saw the old woman who was really the Wicked Queen. Snow White said, hello, and the old woman offered her an apple from her basket, the poison apple that would put Snow White to sleep forever unless she was kissed by a prince. That was the only way to break the poisonous spell. Snow White accepted the apple and took a bite. She fell to the ground and the old woman ran away. The woodland creatures went to get the dwarfs. The dwarfs could not awaken Snow White, so they built her a glass coffin so they could keep watch over her forever. One day, the prince was riding on his horse through the forest 
and came upon Snow White in her glass coffin. It was her who he saw singing at the wicked queen's castle. He knelt down and kissed Snow White. She awoke, and the spell was broken. The dwarfs were so happy. Snow White was awake. Snow White thanked the dwarfs for all their help and said they would be best friends forever. The prince asked Snow White to come and live in his castle. Snow White rode off with her prince, and they lived happily ever after. This is the story of Princess Elsa and Princess Anna. When they were little girls, they were best friends. Ooh. Princess Anna was one of the only people in the world that knew Princess Elsa's secret. Elsa had the special power to make snow and ice. One night, Elsa used her secret power and filled the grand ballroom with snow so the sisters could play. As they were playing, Elsa lost control and she accidentally hit Anna with a blast of icy magic. Anna was badly hurt. Her parents went off to the ancient mountain troll to ask them for help. The wisest old troll told them that Anna could be saved and that she was lucky to have been hit in the head and not in her heart. As the years passed, Anna forgot about that night. To keep Elsa's special gift a secret from everyone else, their parents surrounded the castle with walls and never let anyone inside. It seemed whenever Elsa had strong feelings, her magic powers would spill out. Elsa never wanted to hurt her sister again, so she stopped playing with Anna. Anna became very lonely. Even after their parents were lost, the two sisters didn't spend any time playing together. Years later, it was time for Elsa to become queen. For just that one special day, the castle gates were opened. Hundreds of guests attended Elsa's coronation ceremony. Elsa worked very hard the whole day to hide her feelings and special powers. At the party, Anna danced with a handsome prince. He made her heart flutter. They fell in love and decided to marry. Elsa thought this engagement was a bad idea. Anna could not believe her sister, and they started arguing. As Elsa lost control and started to shout, her secret power was exposed. As ice shot from her hands, everyone stared in shock. Now they all knew her secret. Elsa ran out of the castle and fled to the mountains. It was summer, but Elsa's power had created a terrible winter storm. Anna felt terrible and ran off to find her sister, despite the bad winter storm. She met a magic snowman along the way named Olav. Olav knew where they would find Elsa and agreed to help. Olav led Anna to a beautiful ice palace that Elsa had created with her powers. Inside, Anna found Elsa and told her about the terrible storm. Anna told Elsa she must come back and help, but Elsa did not want to hurt anyone and they started fighting about her return. As they fought, a wave of magic burst from Elsa and struck Anna in the heart. Elsa knew what she had to do. She had to find the trolls and ask how to reverse the magic which was now freezing her sister. Olaf agreed to help. Elsa and Olaf found the ancient mountain troll and he said, Only an act of true love can thaw Anna's frozen heart. Elsa brought Anna back to their parents' castle to find the prince Anna was to marry, as he could save Anna with his true love. 
He laughed when he saw her and threw the sisters in the dungeon. I only pretended to love her to get the castle and kingdom, said the prince. Afraid and locked in the dungeon, Elsa looked at her frozen sister. All of a sudden, the prince came in with a sword. He swung it at Anna, and the sword shattered on her frozen body. Elsa grabbed her and held her frozen sister tight. And suddenly, Anna began to thaw. As Olaf watched them, he remembered the wise old troll and what he said. An act of true love will thaw her frozen heart. The two sisters' love had saved them and their kingdom. They were best friends again. Even in the summer, Elsa always made Olaf snow so he could never melt. And now the castle gates were wide open. The evil prince was long gone and they all lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Aladdin who lived far, far away with his poor widowed mother. One night, a stranger knocked on the front door and said, Good evening, my name is Mustafa and I am looking for my brother's son, Aladdin. I would like to take Aladdin to work with me to make good money. Aladdin wasn't too keen on the idea because there was something about Mustafa that he did not like. But his mother thought it was a great idea and she agreed to let Aladdin go with his uncle. Aladdin and his uncle walked for a full day into the desert until they reached a cave with a small entrance. Mustafa was too big to fit through the entrance, so he asked Aladdin to go inside. Aladdin did not trust him and was afraid he might block him in. But his uncle told him there were gems and gold inside the cave. Wow. Mustafa told Aladdin he could take as much wow. as he wanted. Mustafa only wanted an old lamp from inside the cave. So Aladdin went inside. <laughs> Aladdin could not believe his eyes when he entered the cave. It was full of treasures. He started filling his pockets with diamonds and rubies and emeralds. He also found a gold ring that fit his finger perfectly. Finally, he found the lamp Mustafa had asked for. He yelled for Mustafa to help him out. But Mustafa said he wanted to see the lamp first. Aladdin did not trust him so he refused to let him see the lamp. Mustafa was angry and said, I am not your real uncle, and I don't care about you, Aladdin. Since you won't give me the lamp, I will block the cave entrance with this huge rock. Mustafa left Aladdin inside. Aladdin sat crying with the lamp inside the cave. Stupid old lamp, he said. It is not even real gold. He rubbed the lamp a little to wipe off the dust. And all of a sudden, poof, a genie came out of the lamp. Master, I will grant you three wishes, said the genie. Right away, Aladdin said, take me home. And poof, Aladdin was at home. His mother almost fainted at the sight of Aladdin. He told her about Mustafa and the cave full of treasures. Aladdin rubbed the ring he had put on his finger and a second genie appeared. Master, I can grant you two wishes, said the genie. Aladdin wished for a grand palace and enough wealth for him and his family to be rich forever. All of a sudden, Aladdin and his mother had a beautiful palace filled with riches.
One day, Aladdin was walking through the city when he saw the most beautiful girl. He fell in love with her at first sight. She was the Sultan's daughter, Yasmin. Yasmin loved Aladdin too. Aladdin went to ask the Sultan if he could marry Yasmin, and the Sultan said yes. After many years, the Sultan died, and Aladdin ruled the country. This news reached Mustafa. Mustafa knew how Aladdin became so rich and powerful, and he made a plan to get the <laughs> lamp back. Mustafa tricked Yasmin, who had no idea who he was, into trading him with the old ugly lamp for a shiny new one. Yasmin accepted the trade and went to show Aladdin. Aladdin was mad at Mustafa for tricking his wife into this trade. He searched for Mustafa and found him sleeping with the magic lamp. Aladdin slipped the lamp from Mustafa and raced back to the palace. Aladdin had one more wish, and he asked the genie to turn Mustafa into a frog so that he could never bother them again. <laughs> the genie granted Aladdin's wish, and Yasmin and Aladdin lived happily ever after.